just go ahead and turn this off. Good morning, fellow campers. How are you guys all doing today? Let me go ahead and jump onto my standby screen and back the hell up. Um, I I don't actually I can find an image, a good one, um, for this. But today, um, please ignore my chalkboard. <laughs> today I am doing Torin. Um, it's crappy Monday, and everybody knows uh, that Monday is the worst day of the week comparatively. Um, I'm gonna need this fan to shut up. I'm gonna switch to a different mic uh, as soon as I get to the gameplay. Uh, this mic is actually from uh, my little backup camera that I use to record for other stuff like for projects. Um, so I'm not gonna be using that in this video. You're not gonna be seeing a face. Um, I'm actually gonna try to make that a staple for the rest of my videos going forward. Um, because I think that originally people when they were doing YouTube videos um, had all kinds of other stuff up there. Like I have all the rest of the stuff up here, and I have my old uh, banner that I had that had my name and all the other cool stuff. And then uh, after Twitch came out, people just started you know going with the simple, just put you know yourself in a corner, uh, and then even to get a green screen so that all you saw was that person's face. Well, We're gonna take it one step further and just remove the person. Then eventually, you'll just be watching the gameplay, and then eventually, you'll just be playing the game, and that's the entire point. So, um, I'm gonna be playing Torrent, Crappy Monday. It has a rating of 57 on Metacritic. I'm not really sure what the Steam ratings for it are. I believe it's an indie game, uh, which may be a reason for the low ratings. I know a lot of big rating groups rate indie games a little bit lower, mainly because of the budget. And uh, they don't really look as nice as the rest of the games that are coming out at the same time. Um, now, if you would give me just one second, I am look up uh, the release date for Torn. I'm thinking that it was this year. Yes, May 12th. Um, so, why would you close that? I was looking at that. <laughs> Let me just go to this recent thing. Uh, so, uh, experience the mysterious, timeless world of Torn, the first adventure game from Brazilian indie developer Sword Tales. You are Moonchild destined to climb the tower known as Torn on a hauntingly solitary journey to find your purpose. Um, now, this is not this is not really the type of stuff that I'm going to be doing. I, I do really love indie games. I'm going to be playing a lot of indie games. Uh, the reason why is because this game itself actually has relatively positive ratings on Steam. has about a 76% um, positive rating. Uh, Metacritic is the only one that rated low. Um, since I'm going to be recording the majority of my stuff on my PC, I'm going to be targeting games that are sort of rated poorly by actual people and not like... Well, I guess Metacritic is also people, but people that I would actually talk to. I don't think I would ever talk to anyone at Metacritic because they're apparently people that rate indie games very poorly just because of their budget and not because of the content. So, I'm trying to see if I can have to get the game to start. <laughs> um, that might be one of the reasons why they rated it poorly. It didn't start. Oh, okay, it's loading. Alright, so I'm going to switch over to uh, the actual game feed and just. My face is going to be gone. Phantasm. Um, I don't know if any of the music or anything uh, is copyrighted out of this game. I don't know if any of the scenes are copyrighted. Um, if they are, I may have to uh, either turn down the volume uh, or mute them for those particular scenes or just cut some of the visual feed out. So if that does end up happening, um, I'm just going to go ahead and apologize in advance because this kind of thing that we've been dealing with uh, in the past couple of years. So, without further ado, welcome to Crappy Mondays. I'm Dr. Double Rainbow, and I'm about to take a journey into the world of... Alright guys, let's step into the world of Torin. Um, this is a black screen. Here we go. Alright, so, um, first things first, got the black crow there. That's not the correct controller. Um, how do I even, okay, uh, it's recommended, uh, apparently by the developers, 
to play this game with a controller. Uh, I think the video settings. Uh, I'm playing this on my second uh, monitor here. Uh, my other one's currently hooked up. Uh, I'm doing another video for my PS4, so I can't quite hook it up to that monitor. Okay, I don't really know how those buttons are set up. Alright. So. Alright, right. The analog stick. That's how we control this. New journey. Alright, uh, those for, for those of you that didn't uh, actually watch any of the intro uh, videos that me and the other members of my channel did, this crappy Monday video. Uh, I'm not going to be playing the entire game. I'm just going to be playing a decent chunk of it, uh, probably 20 to 30 minutes, and then giving my rating uh, out of 100 at the end based on what I saw. Did he die? Holy shit. Okay, um, so I'm not... Sure. This this is giving me like a cry engine type feel. I'm not sure if that's actually if this what this is designed on. Um, I'm not blocking that. That's auto blocking for me. Okay, that's how you attack, and then jump. It's a Dargan. Um, uh, okay, that was clippy, excuse me, what? Medusa, is that you? Medusa! Medusa! Yeah. Okay, well, that's... I feel like that's the position that she was in when she got frozen to death, or turned to stone, or whatever. Hey, look, it's a baby in a pool of blood. What kind of shit is that? Time skip, baby? Like a decent time skip, too. How are you not dead? Don't you, don't you require nourishment? The baby. Well, kid, you suck shit. It's a chest. No, I'm, I'm gonna go for the sword. Hold. Okay. You even touch it. What? Gosh, somebody speaking in. Um. 
Hello, evil Santa. Um, I want to know what's going on. So that wasn't a real person? Okay. I feel like... Is that a plant? Thank you for the plant, all father. Excuse me? So I have to... The fuck? When time still lit, what the fuck happened to time? Okay, so... What? So what you're telling me is that people basically built a Tower of Babel type thing called Torin. And after they built this, this giant tower all the way up to the sky to surpass heaven, the sun was like, oh, H-na, bump that. And refuse to get out of the sky so now the moon won't show up and there's a dragon that's keeping the moon from coming so I have to kill the dragon with a magical sword that I don't remember how to use because I died and my memories are inside of that plant that I just planted so I'm gonna have to wait like until that grows into a tree which is absurd and then kill the dragon so that the moon will show up so that the sun will go away so that what? What happens when the sun's gone? We die from lack of sunlight? I feel like somebody didn't think us through. This is a tall... This is tall. Hello, deer. How do I, how do I deer? Or is that an antelope? Yeah, okay. Um, no, not, this is as much camera control as I get. Um, and she jumps like a dead pixie. I guess I have a real jump for a child. What? I don't know the code. Contract of knowledge is written. Oh, that's not terrifying. I thought it said child blood for a second, and I was like, yo. <laughs> but it's childhood. Is that blood, though, right there? 
Am I am I the only one seeing that? Okay. So I, Moonchild, must defy time in some way that only children can do. But all the children are dead except me. I am the only child slash human alive. No, oh, I'm gonna need you not to die. Thank you. The earth itself reveals the price to be paid in blood. Time ma ma mocks the night and present before evil. Ancient ghost litter is fast. So who is that? What? What? I'm confused too, small child. Or moon child, whatever you're supposed to be called. Moonbeam Sunset Ice Crystal is my name. Okay, I'm like 99% sure I can't jump that because she can only jump like a millimeter at a time, so. I'm just gonna go back. What in the world? I feel like I'm missing something important that happens. I could. I'm missing the introduction of the plots. Yo. Um. You've found the chain mail, which protects you against small monsters. Another one of these creepy freaking. Okay, no, nah, put it back. What the hell? What? Okay, so that's the douchebag son. The his heart must be his shield. Ta uh, for he knows nothing about princesses. Um, I can't read that because it's written in red. The spirits parted must seek the light. The future hongs hangs on the tip of the sword. So I have to meet this this dude, and all is silent, knowing he struggles 
in vain. He sins the mire of human nature. I feel like I'm reading these backwards. So I am supposed to meet... Oh. Hey, friend. I feel like that would have blinded a normal person. How did I get out? Uh, yeah. So his common Meha mouth blast turns things to stone. That makes most sense. Yeah, I see that dial there. I just I have no idea. Yo, did you die? Oh my gosh. You jumped like four feet. Excuse me. <laughs> so that, that was a pool of my blood. There, that I saw. So I guess you you revive in pools of your own blood, um, which is extraordinarily creepy. Either that, or it's really heavily symbolizing rebirth, or just birth in general. Is that a person? That looks like a person. I mean, obviously they were stonified. But that looks like it could have been a person. Okay, so how about you try to get down there without fucking dying? Oh, that's from the, the tree that I planted on the floor below this one. Okay. That kind of makes sense. I feel like I should be able to get the sword, like now. You see all that work I put into that? <laughs> Yo, this truck is still growing. I can't like walk up it. Okay, so I can't walk all the way up to the top just yet.
gonna jump and grab that sword. Or I'm walk all the way over there. Can we get your weak? Please move. What? Jesus Christ. But I say, how do you get out? You can't jump. No, don't go. These controls are a little unwieldy. So I'm assuming this is the place that I saw earlier that I was looking to see if I could jump up. Now I should probably be able to jump down. Nope, I will die. Wow. An unhatched egg. I'm not even sure how I feel about that. Anyway, so I kind of just recently noticed um, that oh, get get up. Yeah, the combination for that thing that I did earlier, where I sort of guessed on what that had the constellation. Was it in the sky? Um, it's actually in the sky like in the beginning. It's on the cover. It's like the very first thing that you see in the game. It's just the three random constellations. And then it's in the sky, like right above where I was just at. Um, but. So there are a lot of statue people. Am I supposed to? Like, what? Uh, go away, please. Okay, so there's not, there's not even anything over there. I just went this way. <laughs> I'm kind of okay, so can I pick these up? No, get off me. No, that's not anything. That's really crappy about this game is the jumping, like. We all walk alone. Alright, look. I don't mean to be rude anything, Mr. Robot Elder. 
but it seems to me like I'm doing all the walking for all of humanity right now. So don't feed me that we all all walk alone. Bull crap. Save? No? No save? Excuse me? A robot grandpa? What? Okay, so <laughs> what was that? So those things like eat emotion? I mean, I think it was kind of a given that you weren't really supposed to touch them, but I wasn't really paying attention. Excuse me? What? That was clippy. Whoa, alright. I, you know, underwater levels really were my least favorite part of every Sonic game ever in my whole life. And, and most most Mario's is there fall damage if you're underwater would you drown to death if you don't finish in a certain amount of time cause like Oh. oh. There's not fall damage, there's the blinding light of hellfire.
This is really, really awkward, and I messed up. Oh, oh goodness. Okay, um, so uh, I don't think I can actually make that jump, I think I have to go the opposite direction, um, and I'm going to go ahead and call time on, on this, uh, as much as I would love to continue playing this ridiculous piece of what the hell -itude, uh, I do have to stop it sometime, and I think I'm going to choose right the hell now. Uh, let me go ahead and swap back over to my uh, horrible dash cam, and I will deliver my final verdict on this game. All right, guys, that was Torin from the indie developer Sword Tales. Um, only uh, played just a little bit as the very first part. You have three to come up was almost close to the sword, but I decided against my better nature to check out a random statue in the corner, and that sent me spiraling into an alternate universe in a desert, followed by an underwater level, which required me to do some annoying jumps that, while not difficult, uh, were uh, annoying. Um, so, uh, just a couple things I want to talk about. Um, not sure if you could tell this from me controlling it. Um, there's not a whole lot of control for what you see at all. The, the right analog stick might as well just not even be there because the camera is almost entirely automatic. You can only make slight adjustments to what you're actually seeing. Um, obviously, the jumping, I'm sure that that's something that they thought over and decided that only being able to jump like an inch was important to how you progress through the game um, I'm not sure how at this point but hey uh, the lore behind it uh, is a little bit difficult to figure out at first glance um, obviously I mean you, you can figure it out the whole building the tower and you know ending humanity and having to fight the dragon and have to go through all these things to get your previous memory back and all the skills and armor and whatnot that you have before that you can go up and fight the dragon, meeting up with the other person, uh, who basically just looked like Apollo to me, um, who I'm guessing is the, the sun guy, uh, or something uh, of that nature, and, uh, the way that you get clips of what's actually going on with the actual story is just from looking through, basically looking through the looking glass, and seeing all of the different things that you can see from that for however minimal amount of time that you get to see is pretty interesting. I do like how that plays into the game. However, you still, I don't want to say force feed, you know, the player, obviously no one needs to be force fed the actual lore of the game and if it's not something that's available for you to go and actively explore and see and get for yourself, you're not going to want to do it. Um, but it is, they have their own nicely crafted system to deliver information to the player, to deliver the lore, deliver the story, and to pull you in. Uh, it was getting kind of interesting to see what was going to happen next, where I was going to go next. The game is fairly well 
designed in terms of uh, the layout. You can see how I had to crawl underneath you know, part of the wall or how I had to try and pull out those different pillars. That was definitely a very good example of level design. The graphics themselves, while obviously not huge AAA title level, were very, they, they were pretty good. The, I wasn't even playing uh, the maximum quality because I had my other monitor set up, so it wasn't even 1080p, but you can sort of see how that would look way better. Obviously, I had it on the maximum uh, visual fidelity settings there, but still, it's a pretty, pretty uh, good game. I'm not sure exactly uh, what engine it's going to The one, I didn't get a chance to see that. To me, it looked kind of reminiscent of a Cry engine type design. I'm not sure if it's, it's not quite marked anywhere, and I'm not familiar with the publisher versus evil. So I'm assuming it's just sort of an in-house engine that delivers the same sort of, sh I don't want to say shine, but it definitely, the lighting is reminiscent of how the Cry Engine does all the different brightness and lighting and makes the game feel way more interconnected it makes the game feel more vibrant and brighter and more alive and more full even if it doesn't actually have a whole lot of stuff in it cry engine has done a very good job i know a couple of games like lay mortis and victim battle mage those games look fantastic and i'm not actually sure if a whole lot of resources went into creating those types of games it's just that the way the engine allows you to render some things and allows you to show lighting makes it look really awesome so I think that if they if that is an in-house engine uh, for an indie development company, that's pretty darn good. If they are using CryEngine, still the game still looks great. But the gameplay itself doesn't really seem. It's more niche than it actually has a genre. I could obviously put platformer to the name. I could put adventure to the name. But it doesn't really feel like a platformer. It doesn't really feel like your general adventure game. Obviously, your adventure going up the tower and everything. And there are enemies there. And if you get the sword, I'm assuming that you can fight them. And there are puzzles. But it's not really a puzzler. It's not really an adventure game. It's not really a platformer. So you can't really pinpoint exactly what it is. So it's very niche. It's indie. It's not designed by a huge team the publisher itself isn't a whole very well-known publisher so it's sort of a closet type game and I'm very uh, interested to see what some of the reviews on Steam are of this because most of the reviews are popular and I know a lot of PC gamers that I know personally would love to tear something like this apart for saying you know it needs this it needs that it doesn't look this it doesn't do that correctly and all of these other things. Um, I know the controls are really wonky. Just having the whole hold down this button to interact very slowly with an object, jump very slowly, walk forward incredibly slowly, doesn't really make you really want to play the game a whole lot. Um, you want to play it to get to the next part to see what else is going to happen, but you have to play through it incredibly slowly at a grueling pace and I hope that speeds up a little bit later in the game. I didn't have a chance to view all of that. All in all, mixing the good and the bad, I would probably have to stick with Metacritic's rating of the, the 57. Uh, at most I would give it uh, the 60 and still leave it in the um, sort of sub tier category. Uh, my games normally that I do reviews of anything that's 85 plus I would recommend to literally anyone I would walk like past you in a hallway and just like whisper the name of the game to you <laughs> type stuff uh, getting up there in those top points the next after that would be probably between the 70 to 80 which are games that I would obviously recommend to my friends uh, anyone that I know that likes to play types of games like that and then you have the whole 70 to 60 range where 
it's not really that the game is bad, but it's that it, it really fits into like a little niche, and you have to kind of like that type of game to play. And I would only recommend it to a few people, and then below that, obviously, I wouldn't recommend the game to anyone. Uh, this one I would probably fit in the 60 to 70 category at the lower end because I didn't get to play a whole lot. I'm thinking that if I got to play more, I would probably bump that up a little bit, but just from what I've seen and what I've been able to play, I'm going to have to stick that at the 60 mark. So if you're really into a niche, platformer puzzle or adventure combo in sort of a weird and strange way and you like games that don't seem like they're going to be that long because to me Torn doesn't seem like it's going to take at maximum two to three hours to complete. I only played for half an hour and I got through the first whole chunk of that and you, you can see from the tree um, looking at it if you you know want to seek back and find that part where I just opened up the little scroll and saw that part of the tree you can see how much you actually have to do to get to the top and there's only about eight or nine of those and I had already completed one in 20 minutes or so so and that's with you know me jumping off to the side and doing whatever random thing I was doing it and failing repeatedly so if I had actually been into the game and trying to complete it then that definitely would be done in you know an hour or two maybe three hours so if you're into sort of short niche platformer puzzler adventure game uh, feel free to check out torrent I'll definitely leave the Steam link in the description so that you guys can go ahead and grab a copy of that if you would like to play a game like that. Let me know uh, if there's any other games that you want me to do for Crappy Monday or Turn Back Thursday. I believe this Turn Back Thursday is going to be my special version of Super Mario 3. And as always, drop a comment if you have any uh, problems with anything that I did in the video. If you would like to see uh, more of my face and less of the game, I would be happy to just blow up a huge camera in the corner for all of you guys. And definitely drop your comments and uh, messages in for Fan Fridays so that we can go ahead and make awesome videos that you guys want to see. Thank you for tuning in. I am Dr. Double Rainbow at Multi Dragon Gamers, and I will see you guys in the next video.